Well, good morning and welcome back to the multicolor uh, epoxy series of videos. This is going to be part four and we're going to discuss pouring the green. We're actually going to discuss calculating the tool path for the green and then pouring the green color. Hopefully it'll give you some interesting insights into how each color gets calculated and poured as we move along through the project. At this point in the project, we've already poured the black, we've already poured the white, and now we're getting ready to move on to the third color. As a reminder, this is what the board currently looks like. And uh, you can see that when we start to carve it, we're carving into black and white colors that have already been uh, poured. With that, let's move into the tool path for the green color. We're at the point now where we're getting ready to set up and pour the green. And so I want to look at the tool paths I established before, similar to the previous videos on black and white. So I'm going to take a look. And as you can see, I've got my green layer included here. So I'm going to come over to the green tool path. I'm going to see how it looks. So far it looks good here. I know that it looked good in the preview before, so I'm not going to have to re-preview re it again. Let me check how big the green area is. Okay, so those that offset is 0 0.06. That's what I thought I'd set it up. 0 0.06. Yeah, 0 0.06 is the offset, so that should be good enough to carve. I just wanted to make sure I'd have a good crisp ability to carve that line. We'll go look at the tool paths now. Our start depth, we want to keep it zero now. We're going to go to 0.125 deep. I'm going to select a different 30 degree V-bit because I still haven't replaced this one yet. I need to get that ordered. Everything looks good there. I'm not going to have any area where a 1 8 inch end mill will be able to be used. I'll show you the part that we're actually carving by turning off all the other layers and you can see this is the only part that we'll be carving in between these lines. Point 0.125, 30 degree, no clearance tool, selector, associate tool path, green, close, calculate, and let's take a look at what that looks like. So there's our green. We can check at what it looks like compared to these other colors. And everything looks good. We've got our black line between, our green, reset preview, close. Now we'll save the tool path and go out and cut. Okay, at this point in the project, we're getting ready to go ahead and carve the green. A couple key points I wanna point out before we actually start the carving, so I'll get into that right now. I'm not sure how close you can see this. Hopefully you'll be able to see it up close. But the first thing, I've, I've already put my 30 degree V-bit in. You've already know how to change bits and everything. But one of the things that's important when you're uh, doing this multi-epoxy pour is how you zero your machine. And so I just thought I'd emphasize that again. I think I, I think I talked about it in one other video, but let's talk real quickly. So now I, I put an over here in an area that I try to keep epoxy free, although I got a little bit right over it. I'll go right next to it. And I'm gonna come down to that area And I'm going to start moving in the Z direction. Okay, I'm right similarly close to the X. But the point that I want to make is you always zero off the wood, not the epoxy. Because when you create your design in the Vectric software, everything is based off a reference point. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're zeroing off the wood, not on the epoxy anywhere. Otherwise, your carve depths won't be consistent with what the software thinks it is. So now we're zeroed and we'll be ready for the carve.
here are the colors I'm going to use for my green. I'm going to use Eco Epoxy Metallic Color Pigment Emerald. I'm going to use Eco Epoxy Green Liquid. And then I'm going to see how deep the color is. And if it's not deep enough, I might add about a drop of this Eco Epoxy Black. Okay, now we're at a point in the project where we're going to actually start putting in the color. This time it's green. I'm using the Eco Epoxy Metallic Color Pigment Emerald. I've been wanting to use this. It might be a little bit light. We're going to check it out. Mix that up. I'm not really going to be able to swirl. There's nothing in there to swirl. so. I'm not worried about getting a swirl effect when I pour this. So that's what our color looks like and it's kind of, I guess, yeah, you can kind of see through it a little bit. Put a couple drops of green on there and get that started. Shake it up. It's coming through clear so that's not good. Okay, let's start it again. Okay, I'm going to put some green on there. So I'm going to actually put some on this stick. And use that to drop it. And then I'll stir it up. I'm not sure how clear that is on the screen. I'm trying to see what that color looks like as I look through it. Maybe just one little dab more. And as I mentioned before, this stuff can get out of control if you're not careful. It can just squeeze out. And a little bit goes a long way. I'm looking at a picture over here to see what the color looks like in the logo. I think that's close enough for government work, as they used to say. I think that's a pretty color. Maybe I'll put just a, one little drop of black. Just very, very small drop. Okay, so that darkened it up. I don't know whether you can tell, but that darkened it up even darker. I like that color better, just with a little, just a, the very slightest tab of black tint. Thanks, Shane, for the tip. Shane is so exceptional with colors. I just wish I had that talent. I'm trying to get there. Okay, it's mixed up for color, and now we'll get ready to pour. I don't know whether you can see it through the cup or not, but that's the color. So now it's time to pour, and uh, the first thing we're going to do is look for any particularly narrow gaps, and there is one that's kind of narrow. And I'll try to pour that in first and work it with the toothpick like we talked about before. So I'm putting that in there. I'll go ahead and take a stick and kind of make sure that things are shoved down into there. Hit it with our first torch. That's about all I want to hit it right now. And then I will come back in a few minutes with the torch again. Just kind of trying to keep everything pushed down into the cracks. Get those bubbles start forming. But mostly I want to get it pushed down into the cracks as much as I can because that's a small carve around that border. Let it settle and let some bubbles come up and then we'll hit it with the torch again. 
set the timer for 15 minutes. Okay, we're at the point where we've poured all three colors of this multicolor logo. We've got the black, the white, and the green, and we're setting up now to actually mill this uh, extra epoxy off nice and flat so we can then sand and finish. So that's our next step in this process. We're now getting ready to mill this thing. Let's go through a couple setup items that you should see that I've done. I've made sure the clamps are far away. So if you look at this, you'll see there's boards around each side. I hope the camera's catching that. And then we've got our clamps put in place. The reason I've got these extra boards in place is I like to try to give enough room to go past the board with my milling bit. I'm using a big 2 and 1 8 inch bit, RC2255, a man a bit RC2255. I'll try to remember to put that in the comments. And so I'm actually going to run that bit past the board to help avoid actually uh, burning the board. If you let it sit on the board, it has a tendency to want to burn. And we want to try to avoid that if at all possible. So the first thing I did was I actually went around, and I'm not going to go through the whole detail, but what I actually did was I've already zeroed this, but I want to show you what I did. So I'm going to come down to the edge here, and I'm going to go down, and I'm going to make sure I'm on the wood, not on the epoxy. So I take one of the blades right there on the corner of the wood right here. I don't know how well you can see that, but I'm right on the corner. And I went down and I zeroed it using my method of using a piece of paper. And there it's zeroed. And then I came up and I did that. I actually zeroed it just to make sure the board was down solid. I actually zeroed on every corner to make sure that the board was flat and not warped. So I zeroed this corner, this corner, this corner, and this corner. And when they were all zero, I didn't have to adjust it. It meant my board was flat. That's a good thing. That way I'm not going to be taking off part of the epoxy in one area and not having it off in the other, etc. So that's number one. Again, I put the extra boards around. And what I like to do now is I like to go through and do an initial rundown of where my axes are. So for example, I'm going to measure the Y at first. So I'm going to come down to the Y while I can still see it before it's on. I'm going to come down close and I'm going to come out X enough so that I'm not going to be hitting my clamps out here. And I know that that, and I'll come back in just a little bit, I know that that is now 296 is my farthest x-axis, 296. Then I come to the left side of the board, and I know that is 84. So I want to be before, between 84 and 96 when I'm making adjustments. That'll become clear in a minute. My x-axis, I want to be completely off the board each time I end up. So I'm coming down. My y-axis is I've got to be below 128 at the top. I got to be above 574 and less than 600. Okay, so that tells me if I'm above 574, I clear it. If I'm below 600, I won't hit these clamps. So I've now set my parameters up. X, 84, 296. Y, 128, 574. So somebody will say, well, why are you taking all that in? Well, what I'm doing is I'm actually, I trust myself milling it manually better than I do putting it in a program. So I'm actually going to do this manually with the controller. I'm going to zero it out on this board. I'm actually going to take it up about probably 0.3 mils, 0.4 mils up, go across and mill the whole board once. And then I'm going to lower down the 0.3 mils, 0.4 mils, and then I'm going to zero, do it again. And then I'll be working through that process of taking down points of a mil until I get it to the point I want it. I won't be able to see it when it's carving because I don't want to create a big mess all over the place because this resin, this epoxy resin will fly all over the place when this cutter hits it. So you're not going to be able to see it actually cutting each time. You'll see it after the dust shoe goes by it. But I'm definitely going to have the dust shoe on it. What you have to be careful of is that you're hitting the right buttons. Like I wanted to hit Z and I hit Y there. So you want to make sure you don't do that. So I'm going to come to my starting point, which is X84 and Y. 128, 
actually I can come down to 135. I'm going to put on my dust shoe. I'm going to put on my safety glasses. I'm going to turn on my dust collector. It's going to get loud. I'm going to lower this down to zero and then I'm actually going to take it up 0.4 mil. Now that should put me above this board and I shouldn't take much off off this edge initially. I'm going to turn it on high speed and I'm going to take this run down until I hit 500, 574 on the Y. Let the spindle come up to speed. Now I'm going to drive it across. And as I expected, I really didn't take anything off here. I won't take it off till I get out to here. So now I'll go 25 millimeters at a time. That's half the distance of the bit. You can now see I'm starting to take off some of the epoxy. Okay, my limit was 296, so now I'm going to go careful. Now what I'm looking at is how even is this? It looks like it's coming out good. So I'm looking at the car. I still have quite a bit of resin here, so I'm going to go down another 0.4. At this point, we've smoothed and milled this all off. The rest will become with sanding and getting it finished and putting the finishing touches on it. It looks like once it's milled, initially it looks good, but there's a couple problem areas that now we have to go back and repair. You can see that we've got this G, the white in the middle of the G did not fully fill in, it's a bubble. And we have some white dots here that are bubbles. And so now I'm gonna to have to go mix up some white and get it into those locations. Well, this completes the video on the uh, pouring and carving the third color, which was green in this three layer epoxy. We went all the way through the milling process to show you how I go about milling. And we ended up with a final product that need some extra attention and that happens uh, often when you are doing this process just be prepared for that situation things that I think you might want to take away is the importance of trying to get the color all the way down into the pores and the depth and the ability to get that color into the pore you can see at the end we had some challenges with the white even though I took uh, opportunities to try to push the epoxy down with the uh, toothpick and so forth it didn't quite make it and so make sure that you spend as much time as you can to try to help your opportunities for success i talked quite a bit about that in the white carving pour video but this shows you why i spent so much time trying to emphasize trying to get it in there and improving your odds but no guarantees the other thing i would thought was important is uh, people will wonder why didn't i just program the pocket path into the milling process and that's primarily because I want to have full control of that milling process. As I discussed in the video it's such a sensitive process you only want to go down 0 0.3, 0 0.4 mils at a time and you don't want it to burn the wood, you don't want it to be held in any one location so I like to have total control 
of that process. I just make sure I set it up so that I can have total control. So the next video will focus more on how we address the white issue and then how I address the green issue and the results of those efforts. So I hope you had some learning occur here and I hope you are having a great day and a great life. Uh, look forward to interacting with you more in future videos. And with that, I would say thank you very much for watching. And if you like this video, please uh, put a thumbs up. I'd like comments. And if you like it, please share it. And uh, subscribe so you get future videos. Thank you very much.